Uh, Jeff, uh, right, where are we? Uh, oh, you know what we're up to? We're up to a bit of Nerd Pledge, aren't we? Before we get to the... Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Nerd Pledge. Nerd Pledge. Nerd Pledge. It's a bit weird doing that um, but just unexpectedly. But here we are. Nerd Pledge is a game that we play with nice people who listen to this show and they decide to fund it. They bankroll this entire enterprise um, and they do it by sending in very specific amounts of currency in numbers that relate to cricket in some way and we have to work out what the number means. Got a double header today because David Smith sent a clue and as far as I can tell, Patrick Hargraves did not... But they sent the same number. David Smith sent $3.45 in Australian dollars. Patrick Hargraves sent it in British pounds. But I know that Patrick Hargraves is Australian because we've Mm. met at some point and used to pledge in Australian dollars. So maybe it's still an Australian number. Thus, I thought double header could be the same answer. David Smith uh, has left a clue. You can tell me what it is. He has. He has. So so starting, well, I'll go to Paddy first. So he, he does live in London now. Um, indeed, he's coming to Dublin with a number of other final worders for the uh, Oval Dream Boys trip in April, mm-hmm. where he will open the bowling for us, I suspect. Um, so that, that that is likely to account for his change in currency, that he'll be earning sterling rather than AUD now. So uh, that'll solve that. As for David, equals a match tally that was a first from one of my all-time favourite bats. One of my all-time favourite bats. Okay. Double header. I like these, Jeff. I'm curious to see where you've gone with it. So 345 tally in a match. I figure we're looking for a double century and a single century in a test match, um, which is interesting because we were just talking to Glenn Turner about playing the test when Lawrence Rowe did exactly that on debut, made a double and then 100 in the second innings. Uh, Lawrence Mm. Rowe is one of eight who've done it. Um, Maybe maybe I should pop quiz you. Do you reckon you can... Do you think you could conjure a couple of the others who've made a 200 and a 100? A few. Well, Gooch. Yep. Uh, Gooch did it. Um, yep. Taylor didn't, did he? Because he was 334. Then he no. 90-something at the end. Uh, uh, Doug Walters did it. Double 100 and 100 in the same match. Um, that was at the SCG, I think. Mm-hmm. And 200 and a 100 in the same game. I feel like there's another Sangakara triple as well. Yeah, Sangakara did the triple and the, and the one. Not, not, Sangakara did the triple and the hundred. Uh, yeah, as you go through it, some more will tweak. I've done okay there. Name three or four yeah. for you to get you going. You've done for, that, that, that's that's good. I, I figured you'd know the, the triples anyway. Um, so Gooch and Sangakara, the six others, Lawrence Rowe. And th- th- this is quite interesting, right? So Lawrence Rowe does it in a match against Glenn Turner in 1972. Greg Chappell does it in a match against Glenn Turner in 1974. Um, so this is something that's happened eight times in tests and two of them were against Glenn Turner oh, yeah. in the space of two years. Um, that's the Auckland game. Oh, yeah. that, so that, that was no, the, it's the that, Wellington when, game. That's right. So both Chappells make hundreds in both innings, but Greg's in the first is a double. Uh, make it mm. a double. Uh, and, um, and Chappelle was more conventional. Um, mm-hmm. Hundreds of the single variety, but yeah, between them. They raised the bat lots at the basin. Yeah, so that's that's just before the Christchurch game where New Zealand win, that they had the 50th anniversary celebration. Um, so there's a lot of Glen Turner adjacent stuff here. Um, Brian Lara does it in uh, Colombo starring Peter Fork in 2001 um, where Lara was player of the series in a whitewash, which I think, as far as I could tell, is a feat that has only been matched by Matt Henry last week um, in the 2 nil <laughs> defeat to Australia. So I've, they're, they're the only two that I've been able to find. Marnus Labuschagne did it in Perth against the Windies a couple of summers ago. Sunil Gavaska is the only one who made his double in the second of the two innings in, in the match. Um, there are a couple who got very oh, close yeah. to doing the same. Andy Flower had a 199 not out in the second innings after 100 in the first and Bruce Mitchell, the South African opener, post-World War II, 189, not out. I did a story time on that, one of the uh, epic, ridiculous test match. So go and check your story times for the, uh, the Fl- Andy Flower and Bruce Mitchell ones. But yes, Doug Walters, you mentioned, he's the one whose double and 100 add up to 345 runs. Uh, Kevin, as his first name was, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Walters, doesn't quite have the same ring. Douglas, middle name, Dougie, forever, crowd favourite. Of the 70s. Um, long career. Doug Walters played from 65 to 81 in the test team, which is quite a remarkable span, really. And it's interesting where he's he's known as the caricature, right? Like the the, the hard-drinking, hard-smoking, wacky, fun-loving dude who's, who's um, you know, always up to something, japes and pranks and all that kind of kind of business but proper player um test average of over 48 with the bat Mm. with 15 tons 
And, you know, didn't take bags of wickets, fewer than a wicket per match, but he still took them at an average of 29. And um, the strike rate is a wicket every 11 overs or so, which is pretty decent going. Um, so country boy, um, dairy, dairy farming background from New South Wales, quick on his feet, not not huge, but um, was able to get to the pitch of the ball, liked to take on the bowling. And he's 16 years old when he gets picked for, uh, starts getting picked for like New South Wales country and New South Wales Colts sides. Um, impresses enough doing that, that eight days after his 17th birthday, at the end of December 62, he makes his first class debut in a Shield game against Queensland, whose wicketkeeper is Wally Grout. Uh, Tom Vivers is the off spinner. Remember him from our conversations with oh. uh, William McInnes. <laughs> um, and this this is the season where Wes Hall plays for Queensland. So, you know, you're 17 and you're playing against Wes All Hall. Right. Um, Dougie is carded to come in at seven. Uh, so he bowls a couple of overs for nothing much, gets out for one. New South Wales gets smashed for 82. They follow on and then he makes 50 in the follow-on second best score for New South Wales of the match. Um, and then his second season, he's still 17 when the season starts. He makes a couple of tonnes in that season and his third season early in 1965. Exactly the same match situation as the debut. Queensland make plenty. New South Wales are out for bugger all. Dougie's made two. They're following on. And this time he makes 84. He sets Queensland a lead of 251. New South Wales bowl them out just short. And he's away. Um, he, he takes wickets and makes 76 against WA in his next start. And then he plays the MCC for New South Wales and makes a ton, plus some more runs in the second innings. Uh, and so a few d days short of his 20th birthday, he makes his test debut, makes 155, takes a couple of wickets. And... And he's away, um, renowned for, for being the player who made centuries in a session multiple times during during his career and, and I guess the guy who who kept a cool demeanour in Chappelle's team when things could run pretty hot in that outfit. It's kind of interesting to me, I think, of Walters as being of the Chapels generation, right? Like even the story that we were telling before, like he, you know, he goes all the way to play through until... When does Walters finish? He finishes in the early 80s, doesn't he? 81. His final test matches, but it's into the 80s. 81, right. Yeah, 81 in England, probably, because that's where he had so much trouble over the no, years. No, just before. He, so he gets left out yeah, of the... Yeah. He gets left out of that Ashes squad, and that's when he retires. He plays the home series against oh, yeah. uh, New Zealand that's and right. India. And then... Um, and does well. Like, makes runs that's in those. Right. Makes 100 against New Zealand. Makes runs in that last series um, against India. But he's not picked on that tour and on that England tour, so he calls it quits. Yes, but I mean, I, as you know, I quite like the overlap game. And now he's in that team on his test debut with Wally Grout. Wally Grout made his first class debut in 1946, just after the war. So, yeah, you, you know, through Walters, you got to go from the immediate post war era, at least at first class level, through until the early 80s. And I'm not sure who the right cricketer is from the early 80s to pick it up and run with it, but there'll be someone there who he played against as a, an older guy who played through until, you know, probably close to the 2000s, maybe not quite all the way that far, but at least the mid 90s or something like that. So, um, yeah, it's a, a reminder of, uh, you know, the Walters longevity. Well, the, yeah, the longevity is a big part of it. Um, I guess it's relatively early in his career when he has the 345 game. Um, Australia have bossed the series. It's the fifth test. They're leading 2-1 coming into the last, but I guess that means they could still cough up a, a tied scoreline. Um, it's Wes Hall bowling again. It's actually Wes Hall with Charlie Griffith, Gary Sobers and Lance Gibbs. And um, uh, people who l listen to a lot of the show will have heard us talking about that quartet as being... The four that, that Stark, Lyon, Cummins, Hazelwood overtook as being the, the most combined test bowling quartet. Um, but this is 68-69. Wes Hall's kind of at the end of his, his rope then. He's not the same force. Um, but he and Sobers mm. get Stackpole for 20, Chappelle for 1, Ian Redpath for naught. Australia 3 for 51 when Dougie comes in. Partnership of 336 with Bill Laurie. Um, and by the time Walters is out, he's helped put on 402 since he walked in. Um, he's out for 242 in that first innings. Australia make over 600, but it's a six-day test. So after they bowl out West Indies, having bowled the equivalent of 100 plus six ball overs, because they're, they're bowling eight ball overs at that point, Australia decide to bat again. Again, early trouble. Three for 40 this time. And again, Walters comes in and helps put on 210 in the third innings, <laughs> makes 103. 
Um, they set the West Indies 735 to win, which uh, even when you've got Sobers, Roy, Fredericks, Rowan, Can I, Basil Butcher, Seymour, Nurse, you're not going to run down 735. So Dougie, 699 runs in the series, nearly gets that 700 mark that we were talking about. Jayaswell going past against England in mm. the series just concluded. Uh, four Ashes tours, went to New Zealand twice, toured the West Indies, India, South Africa, played in the Centenary Test, played in World Series cricket, did just about everything you could do across that era and uh, and still going strong. Great record. Uh, 15 Test hundreds, averaged near enough to 49. So, you know, um, you look back at um, assembling composite sides of, say, the 70s, and, yeah, Walters would certainly be there. And I'm not sure how many Test wickets, but I feel like it's 50-something. Um, and most of those were known as partnership breakers and, of course, all the off-field stuff as well about um, staying up all night and um, having the ability to play off no sleep. And he's not the only player to have that reputation, but um, maybe he did it uh, least affected others who you know have been uh, having a reputation for being hard drinking, hard smoking, probably had their game affected. It felt like he needed that balance or, or something like that, or at least that's the myth. Anyway, nice uh, nice way to round that one off. Thank you, Jeff. Double header there for Patrick Hargraves and David Smith. Before we go to the break, Jeff, NordVPN are hanging out with us for a bit longer. Yes, uh, for sports and entertainment. That is probably why you're listening to a show like this. You can safely access your favourite streams and other content from home no matter where you go. So if you have uh, a subscription to something at your home and then you go somewhere else, you can still be at home as far as the internet knows. Uh, Easily switch your virtual location to access apps and websites in other countries and get access to social media and other services not available due to censorship. So when the Republicans ban TikTok, you'll be able to put your VPN on and still watch dance videos while having your data stolen by the Chinese government. Yeah, I think it was everyone, wasn't it? I saw that um, that vote the other day where very few members of Congress, be it uh, mm. red or blue, um, didn't uh, didn't support the banning of... Well, it's not the banning of mm. TikTok. It's the either they divest or the, the company that owns them divest or, or, or it gets... Um, or it gets uh, um, taken away in the states. So mm. anyway, interesting time. Free market, I don't really baby. Use TikTok. I feel like I should. No, we have got a final word TikTok account that Cam looks after for us, but um, that just happens in the background. Um, and hopefully, um, people watch us there and find us over here. Um, no. What I do know, uh, anybody over thirty no should be banned yours. from it, just on principle. <laughs> <laughs> There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee and you'll help support what we're doing on the show. Uh, the best way all you need to do, nordvpn.com slash TFW. So very easy here, nordvpn.com forward slash TFW, 30-day money-back guarantee. Do it. I've used it so often in the last four weeks when I've been away from the UK. I love my Nord account and so will you. Back in a moment. <laughs> 